Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ungodly Geeks podcast. I'm Luke. And I'm Joe. And today we're going to go ahead and talk about summer movies. We're once again going to go ahead and do our 10 list. Uh, now, this, ne- these necessarily aren't the our favorite summer movies, uh, but this is a list of a good 10 summer movies you should probably check out if you haven't seen them. Uh, personally, some of them are of my favorite movies, but, you know, not they're not in any particular order or anything. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and talk about what we got. Uh, so, remember, there are spoilers for this episode. Um, oh, yeah. But some of these movies, like, like a couple of movies I've, I've chosen are, like, 30 years old at this point. If you haven't seen them, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. These You should have seen these, you know. But, hey, they're movies a lot of people love. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to chat about them. All right. So, should I start? I'll start. Yeah, you go ahead. All right. So, my first movie um, is going to be Independence Day and not the pile of shit that was just released this this past year or whatever. Gurgis. Resurgence. No, mine is the original um, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. They, it doesn't have a super great score on it, but it doesn't matter because I thought it was a great movie. I do agree with their assessments, though. Uh, they say, you know, there's some weak characters, weak dialogue. Okay, I totally get that. But uh, for me, the message that it sent, the, 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 uniting, the, the uniting of the entire world against one common force, you know, all the shit that makes us different. That struck out to me. That that was a real big thing for me. And I was like I was like ten when this movie released, so I probably saw it like a year or two later. I didn't get to see it in theaters because I was poor. But uh it was a big thing for me back then. I one thing I love is it's just mindless, awesome, pew pew pew, blow shit up, fuck you, welcome to earth type shit. <laughs> I love that. Like and it, 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 it's one of those movies that, for me, still holds up today. It's been 21 years since this movie was released, and I can still sit there and watch it, and it look amazing, even now, with all these modern effects we've got, all this super cool CGI. That movie still looks pretty good to me. Oh, yeah, they put their time and effort and heart into that movie. Right, and it was produced on, like, a $75 million budget and made 11 times what they spent on it. It's like, okay, it's a great movie quintessential uh, like blockbuster for summertime. Oh summer yeah. It, yeah, it, it definitely is. Like it doesn't have the greatest ratings, but it's just a fun movie that you sit there and you watch. And things get blown up, aliens get killed. You got Brent Spinner, who is one of my favorite, what is it Spiner Spinner? I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, Spiner I think. But he plays of course he's known for playing Data. He portrayed Data in Star Trek the Next Generation and the subsequent movies and everybody loves him. And you get him at playing an insane <laughs> Area 51 scientist who never gets let out of the compound, so he has no social skills whatsoever. It's a really, it's, you know, I, I love that part. Uh, Will Smith, he's one of my favorite actors of all time. The last few movies he's done have been shit, but that's okay. I'll forgive him. Uh, and Bill Pullman, he played the uh, president, mm-hmm. did a great portrayal. Jeff Goldblum, just being Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Second favorite Jeff Goldblum performance. Too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, he he was just great in that whole movie. And yeah, like I do agree though. Um, it's obviously not a perfect movie. Yeah, not by the, any stretch of a mile. I would say a six out of ten, six six and a half is probably pretty accurate. It's, it's so high up on the nostalgia factor for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I, I hate the phrase, but it is a turn your brain off movie. Oh, for sure. You sit there, you shove down popcorn, you get hyped up at that amazing <laughs> speech. Yeah, yeah. You will not go quietly into the night. Like, uh, such fantastic movie. And then, of course, uh, I I can't think of the actor's name, but the guy that played the the drunk. Uh, Cornfield, the crop duster guy, just flies his plane oh, into man, the fuck. Fuck, fuck you! <laughs> and that's Hello, it, man. Boys, I'm back. And it's just, it's just great, man. Like they're, and and like I said, the 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 message, the uniting everybody against that that common foe, throwing out all our differences. That's all. That's what I'm about as a human being. Like, mm-hmm. why do we focus so much on this little unimportant petty shit? Like. Like skin color and all, they're like we're all the same genetically. We're all the same, you know, species-wise. Stop being a dick. Just, yeah. just stop being a dick. 
unfortunately it takes uh, aliens destroying half the planet to you know, yeah right yeah get I know that point across blowing up the White House and killing half the population yeah but hey you know what it it, it was a good thing for me I I loved it and like I said it shaped who I I I can honestly credit the movie with kind of shaping who I ended up becoming as a person just being this open minded liberal individual. Mm-hmm. So I can say, yeah, I, I want to say go watch Independence Day if you haven't seen it yet. Or if you have seen it, go watch it. It, it holds up pretty well. Unless you didn't like it, then you're a douche. Yep. Enjoy the catchphrases. Uh, so my first movie, uh, when, I was, when I was building my list, one of the things I thought of is I can't do a summer movie list without uh, Tom Cruise. He is one of those actors that when you're talking about summer blockbuster, he's got to be in there. Oh, yeah. So, now, he's definitely one of the first people oh, yeah. you think of. Tim, Will Smith. Um, so I was thinking about which movie, you know, Mission Impossible, a lot of the great movies. And I had to go with one that I still to this day, even though a lot of movie people talk about it, I don't think it got enough uh, hype, uh, which was Edge of Tomorrow or uh, Live, Die, Repeat. Or the best title it should have taken from the uh, manga was All You Need Is Kill. That movie was fantastic. Mm. Um, in its uh, uh, Groundhog's Day style with like mech suits and an alien invasion and just crazy over-the-top action as well as still having a humorous tone to it. Uh, and like I said, Tom Cruise is amazing in it. He starts out as a douchebag and actually grows as a character. Yeah. Um, it becomes a likable guy. He's trying to do his best to save the world, learn, you know, and just grows throughout this film. And then you've got Emily Blunt, who is a fan-fucking-tastic actress. Right. Oh, for a sure. A badass in this movie. I cannot wait for the sequel. I'm really hoping she comes back and is a big part in it again. Um, and you have Bill Paxton again. I, it, may he rest in peace. I love Bill Paxton. You're going to see him again on this list. Um, he is funny as hell in the, the, he's just got a small part, but he's funny in it. And I think this movie, it, it deserved more than it got. Um, just action packed over the top kind of movie with a really interesting and cool story. Uh, and you know, I, I think more people should see it. If you get the chance, check out the DVD, uh, find it on Video On Demand, whatever it takes. And they are making a sequel. Um, terrible name to it. Apparently it's going to be Edge of uh, – or uh, uh, Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat or something like that. Oh, yeah. That sounds pretty <laughs> so bad. hopefully they can maybe come up with a better title. But either way, I can't wait for the sequel. I, Love the original. i got to be honest with you. This is one movie uh, we've gotten so far. Like, is it, We're only on the second movie, and yeah. I have I have never seen it. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> See, that's a lot of people, though. Yeah. It was one of those. It was like uh, the last Dread movie that came right. out. It was under the radar. Plus, Edge of Tomorrow is not a very good name for an, like a big action movie. Yeah. Um, and then they changed the name to Live, Die, Repeat for the DVD release, I believe. Yeah, th- this is one of those movies that's been through a lot of weird transitions. Yeah, oh, because, yeah. Because like, the original movie poster had Edge of Tomorrow on it. And then they, would, they issued a revised poster that added the extra title mm-hmm. as like a... Um, not as a subtitle, even though it was a subtitle, but it was featured way more prominently. Yeah, it eventually became the title, and uh, and it then was they, confusing. yeah, then they released the DVD, and when they released the DVD, it was "Live Die Repeat" or whatever mm-hmm. it is, and it's like, can you fuckers make up your mind, yeah, please? Oh yeah. They did not, the advertising was not very good for that movie. Right, I mm-hmm. thought the it, that when people they showed a stuff at Comic Con and. Like maybe a, a year and a half out, right. I remember seeing a picture of the suits that they were going to wear, which are kind of like a combination of the mech suits that the military is actually developing, which are more for lifting heavy things, not for combat roles. And in this movie, they took that and put a bunch of fucking guns and rockets and shit on it. And <laughs> I remember seeing that suit and going, that is fucking awesome. Everything, I don't care what that movie is. I want to see it. Everything is made better by adding rockets and guns to it. Oh, hell yeah. I hell mean, yes. it doesn't matter what it is. You got a dog, add a rocket and a gun to it. It'll be a better dog. <laughs> It'll be the best guard That'll dog be you've ever had. <laughs> they just they just they go from mech suits to like full on uh, zoids and shit. Oh man, I I kind of I I hope the tech goes up. And that was one of the cool things is it was kind of grounded 
in near future. Right, so they right. weren't the aliens. Obviously, were futuristic, and they you know were alien. But um, as far as you know, this just takes place. I want to say in the 2020s, maybe a little later on than that or earlier. But yeah, it's a good flick. People should go and check it out. All right, so that was that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. So my next movie is uh, my next movie is going to be Mad Max Fury Road. Mm-hmm. Now I know this one's a pretty easy movie to choose, um, and it is, it totally is. But it deserves every bit of fra- of, of praise rather that it's ever gotten ever. Period. It is such a great movie. It's well shot. The minimal dialogue works so well. Yeah. And they do such an amazing job telling a story with nothing. All it's 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 all visual. There's and they tell such an intricate and deep story, which by this time means it was the fourth movie in the Mad Max series. So you, but it's also sort of a reboot, mm-hmm. and so you should kind of already know the Mad Max series. And of course, I hadn't really watched Mad Max until probably the early two thousands, which is kind of terrible because you got like. 80s and shit. Yeah. It's, it's an older movie series, but it's great. You know, it had Mel Gibson as the original Max, and, you know, you had Thunderdome and shit like that and all sorts of really cool events. But this one is, it, it's simultaneously a reboot and a sort of what the fuck happened later because it's set in a post-apocalyptic Australian wasteland, basically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got Furiosa. She's, she's like, fed up with... Serving a Morden Joe, who is a complete dick bag, in like all of the worst possible ways, he's got these women. He's a true villain. Oh, absolutely! He's got women who are trapped in a harem, and he uses them as brood mares, essentially, to just fucking create followers of his shitty, shitty religion. Yeah. And it's just like it is it is the quintessential like what the fuck is going on here movie. And it's like I I love the movie. It's it's so well shot. There's so many action shots. And you know, but despite what you may have heard, you know, with Charlize Theron and Tom Hardy having friction behind the scenes, I have to say uh they have really good like on-screen chemistry. Like I didn't uh, I didn't at any point in this movie detect that there was any sort of friction between the two as people. Yeah. Like, of course, Mad Max, he's the reluctant, he's not even a reluctant hero. He's just a dude. He doesn't want, yeah, he's, there's no point where eventually he does, you know, kind of, of course, become yeah, a hero. Right. But, I mean, for most of the beginning, he's just like, I, you know, without saying anything, very obviously wants to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, he just, he just wants to find some peace. You know, the story goes that he just lost his wife, he just lost his daughter, and the guy's, and the guy's just trying to find some, some, some peace. That's all he wants. Oh, yeah. Peace and quiet, which I can fucking totally relate to. That's what I want now. He essentially is just surviving. Right. And so the guy's just there, and like I said, he doesn't even start up as a, as a hero. He's just a reluctant dude who gets caught up in some crazy shit. And ends up going to say, well, fuck you to this guy. Gets caught up with Furiosa. And they, they, they do. They save they save those chicks. They save those young women who are being used as broodmares, which is what Furiosa set out to do because she got tired of of all of a Morton Joe shit. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's such a feminist movie. No, dude, who fucking cares? You got to see a guy with his mother's face stapled to his face playing guitar like, strapped to a fucking amp. Yeah. Like, come, uh, dun, 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 come dun, 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 on, dude. You, you got all this cool shit happening. Fucking Things awesome blowing cars. up. Like, who gives a shit? You got these women. They're trapped in horrible, horrible conditions. And that's all you can focus on? I, is that it's a feminist thing? Who gives a fucking shit? It's a badass movie. It's shot really well. Mm-hmm. George Miller came back and made it awesome again. Dude is like 80-some years old or 70-something years old. I read that he had his wife do the editing for the movie uh-huh. instead of him because he knew she would do it the way he wanted it done and That's he awesome. would fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, George Miller can like make anything. Yeah. The dude, I, I love the old Mad Max movies. Oh, yeah. And this one absolutely lived up to it and... Kind of the old Mad Max movies are almost hard to follow. Yeah, they get really kind of out there with Thunderdome. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. No, they're they're super. 
I would I would say they're uh, they're kind of they're not confusing, but there's yeah. just there's just a lot of like there's a lot of what the fuck going on. Yeah, well, especially like the third one, almost other than the fact that there are cars, it's it's before the post apocalypse, and it almost has nothing really to do with the continuing movies. But it was it's still a great setup. Yeah, but this this movie, I think. Uh, it just hit all the right check boxes yeah. for a summer movie without also being shallow and wooden because even though there's minimal dialogue there's also still a lot of character development mm. you have like i don't know maybe 150 200 lines in the whole movie but there's still character growth that is very very visible yeah like you got you got the uh um the cultist who breaks away and decides to start helping them for whatever reason, and he eventually learn. He, he essentially learns that Immortal Joe is full of shit, right? And that there's a better way. They tell him flat out, "There's you're not going to go. You're not to going Valhalla, to Valhalla, shiny it, it, and chrome. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to be shiny and chrome. You're, you're you are essentially meat puppet for yeah. for Immortal Joe to wage whatever pretend war he's waging, and it's really sad, but. I like that there's growth for him. There, there's growth for Mad Max himself. There's growth for Furiosa. Mm-hmm. All the young... like there, There's actual character development with minimal anything interfering. And you see it, and it's good. And the action is amazing. Like, oh, my God. Having Tom Hardy strapped to the front of a car. <laughs> they re- that's the thing that, kill- that, that makes it, too. Is they really was, it, did they that. really did that? People yeah. were just strapped to poles, swinging on cars and stuff. Yeah, and the 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 stunt work in that movie was amazing. Oh man, the, it 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 really really the helped real the movie. Effects. Oh yeah, I mean Practical. obviously obviously stuff like the sandstorm and lightning storm thing was CGI. Yeah, but but it was amazing CGI. It was really good CGI. Yeah, no, I like I can't I can't praise the movie enough. Yeah. Every bit of praise it's ever gotten, it deserves. Any negative t- things, it, I don't, I don't, I don't care. It, it's, it's definitely one of my top twenty movies of all time. Oh yeah, easily top, you know, probably easily top ten. I was so amazingly entertained by. I know we went back and saw it multiple times too. Yeah, I saw it in theaters at least twice, maybe three times. Right. Bought the Blu-ray and then bought the uh, the. Black, black and, and Chrome Edition. Black and Chrome Edition. Which we have Love to watch that. sometime. Oh, it's so it's so good. Like I, I I don't think it it I I don't agree completely with uh the idea that it makes the movie that much better, but it is an interesting way to watch the movie, and I mean I still enjoyed it just as much. So it's definitely worth it. And I also need to watch Logan in in the black and white too. <laughs> that would be yeah, that would be pretty cool. All right, so I th- that's all I've got for, for uh, that. So let's move on to to your movie, your next so, movie. My next movie is uh, something that it, it's it started our current kind of like where we are with movies now, uh, and that is Iron Man two thousand eight. Oh yeah, fucking amazing! That that it that was one of those movies off. for me just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like it really did. I uh, I had, I was sort of touching on getting into comic books at the time, and then didn't really have any idea who Iron Man was other than, you know, friends who, you know, he's the alcoholic Avenger, essentially. Um, yeah, no, that that's pretty accurate. Uh, yeah. Th- that's his thing. And, I mean, it it blew me away. Um, going to see that movie, not really knowing what to expect, going in and just like, holy shit, this is awesome. This is This is what comic book movies can be. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I, that's another one of those movies that, kind of like Mad Max, I can gush over a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and John Favreau directed an awesome, awesome fucking movie, and obviously the biggest star is Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah, no, he is. His comeback, is, essentially. He is Tony Stark. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to get, you know, an alcoholic, former drug-using playboy, uh, billionaire philanthropist. Yeah, philanthropist. Philanthropist. That one. <laughs> if you're gonna get one of those, why not get a real one? Yeah, no. To play the role. I mean, he's really he's become synonymous with Tony Stark. You can't think of that character without uh, Robert Downey Jr. 
it's just he is and I, he's so important to the marvel universe moving forward oh yeah um that teaser at the end where uh, uh i, I want to say it was uh, Samuel L. Jackson was at the end of Iron Man. I can't remember exactly what the teaser was. Was it the, one of the after the credits yeah. things? I, I can't actually speak on that because I've seen the movie. Yeah. Um, but I never saw the after credit sequence because that – I mean we're talking now, what, seven, eight years? Uh, nine was, years, 2008. Yeah, so we're talking 2008 now. So that's nine years ago. Yeah. This was before – that I was into all that. Like I was always into the superheroes and shit. And I obviously I grew up on it, but that was during a time in my life where I was focusing on a lot of other stuff. So seeing a movie was a huge bonus for me. I was fucking broke. Yeah. And so I can't, I, I, I know I didn't see that movie in theaters. I know I caught it instead on HBO at the hotel I was living at at the time. Mm. So I can't speak on the ending credits. So I don't, I, I, I don't exactly remember. And I might, I know, um, this movie did so well that they added the ending credit scene to the Hulk mm. where he goes and is talking to uh, the general right. at the end. And it's right. essentially like, yeah, you're fucking up, which was awesome. Right. Um, but yeah, this it, it's great. It started where we are, where, you know, the, the everything with the Marvel Universe. Oh, yeah. Of course, you can say uh, there's a big help when Disney bought Marvel and said – do what you're doing. Here's a bunch of money to keep doing it better. Right. And I mean, but but this is the movie that we can actually credit with the beginning of all that because mm. it's actually the movie. It saved Marvel Studios essentially. Yeah. I mean, it it kept them going, and it. I think it I was could the probably, first Marvel Studios movie, uh, I believe, as well. Um. Well, wasn't the Hulk before that? Like, oh, it did it come out before? I think it, I might be wrong. Yeah, I, I think thought, the Hulk, I thought Iron Man came out before Hulk. I think the Hulk might have come out like a like. You know, a number of months before, and uh, then yeah, either way. But yeah, like it, the Hulk was okay. This movie is the one that everyone was. Edward Edward Norton's Hulk for. was it was acceptable. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I I I like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk better. I yeah, I like him playing Banner more, yeah, and I yeah. love um, Edward Norton. Edward Norton, yeah, yeah Edward Norton's a great actor. actor, great actor, but. I, I like Mark Ruffalo better as as Banner for sure. What he's evolved into, right? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely come out of left field and been like, oh yeah, he's fucking great. But uh, yeah, it, it was the movie that basically kept Marvel from having to close Marvel Studios. Yeah. Because I remember that year they were on the verge of doing that. I had, I had read some random news piece because this was before um, Reddit was a big part of my life and. Yeah, like it was, it was a, it was a thing, and hell, the it, comic books were about to go bankrupt too at the time. Or they, well, it already had. Yeah, uh, uh, they were, point. they were in danger. So they said, "Fuck it, let's let's just do this. Let's start this. See what happens." Let's throw all shit, chips in. Yeah, so they they threw all in, and uh, Iron Man saved their asses, saved Robert Downey Jr., and kicked us off on the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which we've all seen what's come out of that. Yeah, this awesome universe we're in. Oh, yeah. It's pretty great. So you done? Yeah, you can go ahead. All right, so I'm going to move on to my next movie, and it's going to be Jet Li's Hero from uh, 2002. It was, for me, I I didn't know about this movie until much later on. Mm -hmm. So this is something I maybe learned about. I I always knew it was a thing, but I never really saw it, because 2002 was a really... I was like, I don't know... uh, I was still really young. I was in my teens. I was still in high school. So I didn't I didn't watch it. This is something I watched on Netflix about two or three years ago. And a uh, little background, I am a huge, huge martial arts movie fan. So like Donnie Yen, Sammo Hung, Tony Ja, uh, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, like all of their older stuff before like Jackie Chan became slapstick. It's like all really, really good to me. And my some of my favorite movies in the martial arts category or stuff like once upon a time in China, one, two, and three. I've never watched four, five, and six. Uh, mostly because I just can't find them in good quality, but those are some of my absolute favorite movies. And you got, you got these actors, like I said, like Sammo hung, I will watch whatever that dude is in. And it's the same thing with Donnie Yen, same thing with Jet Li. If I see their name on a movie, it's like, I'm watching that. And so Hero was one of those things that was added to my watch list, which was like 50 movies long at the time. And I just went through it one by one, and I eventually got to it. And 
It's one of those things that, like many martial arts films, was just really good. Like, some of them are really, really bad. Some of them are really, really cheesy. But this one was, was good. You know, Jet Li, he plays just a simple, unassuming soldier at first who somehow defeated these two renowned assassins. And as the story progresses, you know, he approaches the king. He's sitting there telling the king his story. The king's like, really? Okay, so this is what you did. And that's what you did. And that's how you accomplished that. That is amazing. How did you do this? Oh, wow. And in the end, it's basically revealed that it was all a ruse to get close enough to the king to kill him. But the plot twist, and like I said, more spoilers, he doesn't kill him. Okay. He spares him. And the king's like, holy shit, he spared me. Show me mercy. <laughs> Maybe I should stop being a fucking douchebag. So story. Yeah, I mean, he's he, the king's an asshole. The emperor, sorry. The emperor's an asshole. And they, they plot to kill him for whatever reason. And he got these two renowned assassins. And, you know, for me, it's notable. Because it's another one of those films where you get to see two great martial arts actors fight on screen. And it's Donnie Yen and Jet Li. Yeah. And Donnie Yen is probably my favorite martial arts actor ever. He's amazing. He he really is. The dude's got range. He's got he can he can do so many different martial arts. He did Ip Man, Ip Man, like it's one of my favorite film like series of all time. Just like right up there with Once Upon a Time in China, right up there with Star Wars, right up there with all the older Star Trek movies before they turn to shit action movies. It's like, they're all really fucking good. Mm-hmm. And Donnie Yen's just another one of those actors. If he's in something, even if he's not throwing fists, I will watch him. I don't care. I, I'm going to watch him. And, you know, they fight. There's a scene where they fight, and it's just, it's so well done, so well choreographed. It's something I've watched multiple times since then. Uh, it's This is a movie that, unfortunately, is one I haven't seen. Right. You mentioning it, I don't even know if I had heard of the movie before that. Right, um, it it definitely didn't get a lot of a lot of marketing because yeah. I mean was it, the, is this a, was this a Chinese release movie? Uh, it was not. It okay. was released here in the in the states, but it is a Chinese language movie. Okay, that's yeah, that's that's, what that's probably okay. what that's probably it is. Why it yeah, very big. but it's it's such a shame because it's such a great movie. Yeah, and I I love the twist at the end where Jet Li's character, whose name escapes me because it's been a while since I've seen it, he is. A, he's basically executed, mm-hmm. which is to make sense. It makes sense. You just tried to kill your emperor, so you're going to get executed. The thing that I loved about it, um, and it was this ending plot to us, aside from all the good shit that's in the movie, is Jet Li's character is executed as an assassin, but gets buried as a hero. Because mm. this king's like, the emperor's like, he, okay, I'm an asshole. He pointed that out to me. He did all this shit, all this amazing stuff to point this out to me. And it changes his whole perspective on everything. And yeah, and he he gets buried as a hero. And I I, I don't know why that resonates with me, but it does. Because I think it's it's such a cool thing. And I think maybe it's because it's the human side of it where the guy is like, oh, maybe... You know, introspectively, like, hey, I should stop being a douche, mm-hmm. and so he, he changes, he changes everything, and boom, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. You guys, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Really, it's on Netflix. It really, it, it's there. And so, you, if you have a Netflix, you're a subscriber, go watch it. Yeah, it's definitely going to go on my watch list. It sounds, it it almost reminds me of that. Jackie Chan, yeah, Jackie Chan Jet Li movie that came out. It's much better. That than ended that. up being pretty bad. It's way, I was way disappointed better than that. You're, you're thinking of. Uh, it was like a kid goes into the past. And, yeah, uh, like the kid goes into the antique shop, fucks yeah. with a staff during the, the a robbery or whatever that gets botched and gets transported like 500 years into the oh, past. Man, but he was... has this. He has the legendary staff, so he's somebody important to these people, and then. Jet Li and Jackie Chan come together, and one of them's flippant and and assholeish. The other one is super strict and assholeish. And it was almost the one thing that made me happy is Jackie Chan almost kind of reprised the Drunken Master mm-hmm. style. Yeah, uh, which and the fight between him and Jet Li was good. 
Oh yeah, it was a, it was a really good fight. It was over the top action, but yeah, other than that, bad movie. Um, yeah, it was, it it was yeah, it was definitely so, not a great movie. I'm glad to hear that this one's better. And oh, much better. I didn't I, I didn't really know of Donnie Yen until recently when I finally sat down and started watching Eat Man and like uh, Kung, was it Kung Fu Killer? Yeah, Kung Fu Killer, yeah. a special ID. Yeah. Um, there's a couple others that are on Netflix and that are just fantastic. Just oh my god, that dude is amazing. Yeah. Um, and even even like the Eat Man series is a series that you're you know you see and read the descriptions or whatever. Um, I was thinking there's no way that this, this second third movies are going to be as good. No, they're they, going to be they, great. They're easily as good, and they're fucking great. Even I, the third third with, with Mike the Tyson, one, the Mike Tyson, yeah. yeah, he fights Mike Tyson. It is fucking awesome, people. It, 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 yeah, it's technically, watch that movie. It's technically the fourth movie because they had a uh, a, a third movie that they was had a, a different actor. It was like um, a prequel. It right? was no, it was an it was not actually it was after. Ip Man Three, like okay. on, on a timeline, it would be after it takes Three, place after. Okay. because Anthony Wang, I think, it, I think that's who it is. He plays Ip Man, and yeah, he's older. He's much older now. Okay, and you get to see more of Bruce Lee in the movie because um, Ip Man was Just Bruce Lee's trainer. Yeah. yeah, and um, that's cool. I need to check that one out too. I've only seen the three. Yeah, it's called Ip Man: The Final Fight. Okay. And it, 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 it was on Netflix the last I saw it. I don't think those will ever leave Netflix. Um, but back, I, I just want to talk about Donnie Yen for a few minutes before we move on. The thing that I, I think I like the most about him is that he's he's a mixed martial artist. And you can see that in Kung Fu Killer and Special ID and shit where he actually does get to the grappling and on all the, the MMA shit. But the thing I like about him, he was chosen for Ip Man. He was trained directly by Ip Chung. Which is Ip Man's son or grandson? I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but he is the one now who is the only person that is like able to certify somebody to be a master in the Wing Chun style, okay. which is what he uses in those movies. And um, Donnie Yen is one of those people who's so talented when it comes to martial arts. He did about eight months of training and was ready for the movie. And you see him Jeez. in that movie. And the dude is like, it, it really does look like he's been practicing Wing Chun his whole fucking life. Oh, yeah. Because he's, he pulls it off so smoothly and so fluidly. And it's just, it's just great. Oh, yeah. So that's, that right there is probably why he's my favorite martial art actor ever. Yeah. Jet Li's there. Tony Jaw's amazing. But <laughs> him doing just that little tidbit, eight months of training in this discipline... And he pulls it off like a grandmaster. Like Ip Chung's, like he's fucking amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that that was that was that for me. Anytime we can pimp him out. <laughs> I so mean, him in Force Awake or not Force Awakens? Uh, the other for, one. Uh, Why can't we remember this? <laughs> I have no idea. The prequel Star Wars movie. Uh, but anyway, yeah, him and that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> he put a bag <laughs> over his head. He's the blind. He's the blind Jedi. Basically. Yeah, he was cool. <laughs> I am one with the force. The force is with me. Yeah. Um, so my next movie is – this is where we get into some of my all-time favorite movies uh-huh. – uh, is Aliens from 1986. Uh, Could have gone with Alien as well, but I actually was one of those people that when I was younger, I saw Aliens before I saw Alien. Right. Uh, and it's just one of those movies that is fucking awesome. I go back to it all the time, at least watch it. Two or three times a year, right? Uh, even if it's on like TBS or something, oh, yeah, fucking edited yeah. to hell, I'll still watch it. Uh-huh. Uh, Aliens is legitimately like eh, top three all time favorite movies. Um, it it builds on what was already established in Alien, uh, where you had just this absolutely terrifying creature, and the, it it continues that. And it brings back, you know, uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver's Ripley. Right. And she's playing just a fucking badass chick. And I was going to say, even with uh, uh, Fury Road, yeah. I don't get what this shit is with, like, these, oh, it's feminism in movies if there's, like, a tough female character. I mean, all right, all right, I, I got to throw this out there. I think it's a lot of dudes just being insecure. insecure. Yeah. yeah like, like, it, it's, in, it's insecurity. It's like, who gives a shit who the lead is? Are they entertaining? 
Are they badass? Is yeah. that what you want from the movie? Is that what you're getting? Well, fuck off then and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Stop making it about things that it's not about. If Sigourney Weaver is badass in this movie... Or Gal Gadot. Or, yeah, Gal Gadot is badass as Wonder Woman. But fucking let it be that way. Mm-hmm. Because it's awesome in every conceivable way. And if you're threatened by that, you really need to have a good little hard look at yourself. Yeah. Anyway, back to back the to topic. Aliens. Yeah. Uh, so this don't movie get is one of those there. movies that kind of, a hey, I don't I don't I can't say it it started Space Marines as being badass fucking soldiers. Right. Um. But this was the first time I ever saw you know Space Marines in this way where you have this whole squad and they're talking like fucking mad game, getting ready to go on the bug hunt, hit the planet, and. Uh, as soon as they get there, as soon as they meet the xenomorphs, shit goes down. Oh yeah, where you see from Alien, where the xenomorph was terrifying, um, but I mean that movie was a little limited by the technology, what they could do. Uh, it was just a dude in a rubber suit. Aliens kicked the budget up, kicked everything up a thousand percent. The aliens, fucking the way they move, the way they run through vents, uh, all the shit they can do is terrifying. Um, and it's one of those movies that has is so quotable. There's so many things of it. Uh, I like uh, game over, man. Game over. <laughs> oh yeah. I no, love I, I still quote so that. Much. I've never seen the movie, and yeah. I will still occasionally quote that because that's one of those things that's become so iconic. Yeah, get away from her, you bitch! Like it's a movie that from the beginning to the end keeps you on the edge of your seat. Um, it's even, it's, it's classified most of the time as like an action movie. I still think it's an action horror movie. There's yeah, still scary I mean, elements. The Xenomorph, like I said, is fucking terrifying. It shows these soldiers don't fucking make it out. Uh, the only one who I think technically survives is Hicks. Um, I mean, Hicks, Newt, and Ripley. And they, they, I just, I love it. I, I want to see it. Uh, I always wanted to see more of that universe. Yeah. Um, why I'm disappointed where the Aliens franchise went uh, even recently. Mm. And it's it's still one of my all-time favorite movies. Watching that fight when the door opens and Ripley comes out in that power, uh, that, that loader. And, ah, oh, just so fucking awesome. Goes toe-to-toe with the, the queen alien. Just this, the, the practical effects and i i i'm assuming that you see i know they use cgi in the movie too just looks so amazing right i i love it when when movies can can do that they can yeah. integrate cgi and it still hold up well that's one of my favorite things of all time um that's, that's why i love independence day yeah so and my next movie you know, you know that's why i love that that's part of the reason why i love that mm-hmm. so are you done? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. All right, so I'm going to move on to my next movie. It's I could be... talk about it for a lot longer, but I don't want to keep you all here for four and a half hours. And Luke would totally do that. Oh, yeah. And he'd get to a point where he's just repeating himself. But I, got, you, I got two movies I'm going to talk about a lot anyway coming up, so. Yeah, it, it would just get increasingly um, just simple, and he'd just, he would just evolve to caveman grunts. It would just be me that uh, would come out at night. In movies. Mostly at night. It was mostly. pretty. <laughs> okay, anyway, moving on. Um, my next movie is Who Framed Roger Rabbit from 1988. Mm. Um, this is a movie that was a very, very huge part of my childhood. And it's one of those things that I can probably remember watching 30 or 40 times easy. Um, it, I, I had it on VHS and the movie is so good. It has such an original storyline for the time. Cause you're talking 30 years ago now. It, it, it's, it doesn't follow any tropes. And you have such a good combination of animation and real life coming together. Yeah. It's like, you know, you get, you get to the point where you, you know, uh, like the scene where Roger Rabbit first handcuffs Bob Hoskins' character, whose name, he was a detective, I can't remember his name now. But he, he first handcuffs him and drags him around the room. You can it, like it's believable. Their their actions are believable. His reaction is believable. It's like how the fuck did they do this? It's amazing for the time that that movie came out too. This bullshit digital mix they do nowadays. Yeah, can't fucking touch. Who no, Roger no, Rabbit. Absolutely not. Like, like seriously, I can sit there and I can watch this movie. And if it wasn't for the graininess of the film at the time, if you told me this movie was made like five years ago. Based on the effects alone, I could believe you. Yeah. 
Like seriously, it is the the interaction between tunes and real life objects was it blo- it's still mind blowing today for me thirty years later. And when it popped up on Netflix like six months ago, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm watching that. Hell yeah. I had to watch it, and it was one of those things, it held up. It really fucking has held up. And the effects have held up, the comedy has held up, the Jessica Rabbit has held up. So yeah, <laughs> you know, got to be, that's one of my first crushes, so I got to mention that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I-, I loved it. And one of the things I-, I really do like about it is the collaboration between the cartoon franchises. Mm-hmm. Because you had Disney characters, you had Warner Brother characters, and I think you had some Hanna Barbera characters, like it, 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 all the big names. Then I they do all... remember the cameo of Mickey and Bu- uh, Bugs, which was just so beautiful to see. I mean, on you, TV. and of course there was Donald Duck and Daffy Duck having yep. their interactions. You know, like there were so many. Just like it, it wasn't a bunch of generic tunes. Like these were all tunes you fucking knew who they were. Yeah. I mean, Roger Rabbit obviously was no one. I I didn't know him before the movie. I'll be honest with you, but it, it, and it's very possible he didn't exist before the movie, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. But if he did, hey, feel free to correct me. I'm I'm, I'm just a human. I fuck up. <laughs> but, like, yeah, just having all these characters that you could recognize. You had Betty Boop, and you had fucking, boop, like I said, boop, boop. yeah. <laughs> God damn it! And uh, yeah, like I said, you had these, you had all these characters that you actually recognized. You had the Whistling Wolf, and you had—I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing the Coyote and the Roadrunner in there. And it, I want to say, I, I want to say the Roadrunner ran into a wall. Classic gag. Yeah, that's very possible because True, they did uh, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, like, there was a lot of the gag, and and of course, you know, having um, not not Christopher Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. As oh the my villain. God. He was so creepy. Nightmares when I was a oh kid. Oh my God. He was so scary. Just like this. And it, the plot twist at the end, of course, he ends up being a toon. Yeah. Which is like, wow, what a dick bag. But oh, it's so evil. scary. It, pure evil, too. Yeah, no, like the dude had no mercy. You could tell his parents didn't hug him at all. No. Like the dude was totally pure fucking evil. And wanted to build highways through Toontown. Yeah, what a dick bag. Douche like, bag. And he wanted to kill all the Toons mm-hmm. with that, that nitroglycer, or nit- that acid, whatever that was. And it's like, yeah, it was... It was Fucking it was really, horrifying yeah. shit, too. Bubbled and was sticky and yeah. like... It, it was viscous yeah. and things just... Shit, they, there was that hiss. Oh, that shoe. Yeah. That poor little that shoe. That poor little shoe, man. Oh, my God. That was that was that was nightmare fuel for me. Yeah. But the rest of the movie was really fucking good, and it made up for it. It was goofy. It was lighthearted. It had good heart. You know, I, I loved the movie. I really did. <laughs> Bob Hoskins, who you know, may he rest in peace. Bob Hoskins was great as the lead in that movie. Like it, it was, he's, it was good. He's the perfect angry guy. Yeah, Bob perfect Hoskins angry was short amazing. guy. Too. Yeah. he was five oh, foot yeah. six, so he's a, he's a short little bald dude. He was so good. He stood so tall in that movie, and I love it. I love the movie. And anytime it's on something, like if, yeah. I'm, I, if I'm just, and I don't watch TV, I don't. But if there's ever a situation where I do, or any situation in the past where I did, that movie was on. I was, fu- I was sitting there watching it. That's what I was doing for the next hour or whatever. Oh yeah, I still remember when I was younger. I didn't get so much of that movie because there's like. Uh, abolition time stuff in that movie. There's a lot of like uh, sexual innuendos in that movie. Stuff where they they reference uh, her cheating on you know possibly cheating on Robert pay, playing patty cake. Yeah. Um. And then there were a lot of adult themes. That, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. That I just didn't it's, understand. That movie could not fly nowadays. There's some no, like absolutely. There's not. some <laughs> old school like casual racism, with, especially uh-huh. with the bullets. Uh huh. Um. But oh my. God, was that movie funny? Yeah, somebody Sam. He popped up in the movie. I know. Yeah, he popped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, like it. I said, there were so many good characters. Mighty Mouse. I'm pretty sure I remember seeing him. And of course, at the end, all the tunes come together, and, you and they to... sing. Yeah, they all sing. <laughs> I don't remember like, the God. song, but it was so cheesy and catchy. But, but it, it was it was a great fantastic movie, movie, and I think I'll probably go watch it here in like a few hours. I have to go watch all of these again. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely gonna watch Hero again. <laughs> Movie, that movie is so so fantastic. Yep. Um, I I don't have anything more to say about it. If you if you've not seen the movie, go do it. Do yourself doesn't, a favor. It doesn't matter how old you are. 
it's one of those things. It, it is enjoyable. It yeah. legitimately is just it's just a good movie. It's a classic. And it's another one of those movies like where I feel like Mad Max gets all it deserves all its praise. Who framed Roger Rabbit deserves its praise too. Every bit it gets. And like I said, the the effects, the interactions between the, the animated hand drawn mm-hmm. characters and Bob Hoskins and the real life characters, their reactions, their their emotions, all of it is it feels so genuine. Patty cake. And it's Patty so cake. so good. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I couldn't help but think of, think of parts of that movie. But uh, but yeah, go go see it. Yep. Uh, All right. right. <laughs> so my next movie is uh, I'm switching my order a little bit. My next movie was probably I think I honestly think this is the first big blockbuster movie I went and saw in the theaters, and then I saw it again and again, and that movie is Jurassic Park. Oh and yes. Dinosaurs Just eating fucking, the lawyer yeah. on the shedder. I, I love that. Dinosaurs come to life in the best way. Uh-huh. Um, absolutely mind blowing. Fucking the effects in this movie still hold up and are better than current. The, the I the the digital effects in this movie are better than the Lost World. Oh yeah, no, or, I, I mean in the uh, Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Yeah, I, I would uh, definitely better agree. than Lost World. That was. I would definitely definitely agree with you there. Like. Jurassic Park's in one of those movies that, much like some of the others on my list, I could just gush over for yeah, hours. It's legitimately timeless. It's uh, a movie where it's like all of the acting it is on point. Um, and, I mean, there's it, it's a movie that will go down in history as one of those perfect summer blockbuster movies. Oh, yeah. You go in, oh, yeah. you watch it with popcorn. Uh, I honestly think they should release it in theaters every summer, just because. It's I, you know summertime. what? I got to be honest with you, man. If they, if, if there were theaters across the nation, like a chain of theaters that yeah. said, "Fuck it, let's just devote a screening, a screen, like for a week to just Jurassic Park," I'd go see it every time. Yeah, it's just a phenomenal movie. Um, and you had Jeff Goldblum playing uh, like a perfect Jeff Goldblum character. Yeah, my um, favorite Jeff Malcolm, Goldblum, Malcolm Walker, Malcolm. right? Yeah, uh, he played Malcolm. Uh, Sam Neill played Grant. Right. Laura Dern. Laura Dern as Ellie, and don't even fucking care about the kids because it's you know nobody cares about the kids. Nobody cares about kids. Seriously. Although this was like the only movie, and maybe because I was a kid when I saw it, <laughs> it's one of the only like monster ish movies where <laughs> I liked the kids in the movie. I don't hate them the way I do. I in, don't know. I mean, honestly, in she, the new. Uh, the new the movie little the little blonde movie. girl totally lays down the most <laughs> cringy line ever. This is what it's, it's a, a unique, unique system. system. I recognize. I know this. I know this. Like, <laughs> dude, what it was is that so shit? Nineties though, man. Came oh out yeah, ninety three. Um, such a such a good flick. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I I can totally get on board with seeing Jurassic Park yeah. anytime. We did that move, m- movie night. The, the before we went and saw Jurassic World, and I'm like, yeah, Watch this. yeah, yeah, that was good, and yeah, Jurassic Park is definitely one of the like that. That was one of those movies that came out early enough in my childhood, and I managed to see it early enough in my childhood that it sparked an incredible interest in science in general. Mm-hmm. But of course, focusing on dinosaurs. So man, I was at the fucking library every week after oh, that, yeah. getting dinosaur books and. Space books, but that's completely unrelated because space is fucking awesome. <laughs> but yeah, fucking dinosaur books and shit like that. And I, oh man, For Jurassic longest. Park. Jurassic Park is a fucking great movie. And you see like the behind the scenes specials and shit where they're showing you how the T Rex worked. It's just oh yeah, it, it was animatronic and hand controlled, and it was like fuck yeah. How much it didn't work because that whole scene trying to do that in the rain with yeah. an animatronic T Rex was, was nearly terrible. impossible. Nightmare. You know what? They fucking did it. They fucking oh, they made got it, work. it done. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Um, like I just I. uh I always go back to when watching that movies. As soon as I came out, immediately I was going to be a um, uh, a dinosaur bone person. Is what I used to oh, call an back archaeologist. Uh, uh, yeah, an archaeologist, or um, there's another term for I, it. There is a specific. I don't know. That's I, what I, I was. I'll going be honest to be. with you. I don't care. Um, <laughs> for you know that it, it is what I was going to do. Is I just wanted to look at dinosaur bones. Right. Um, Constantly, I begging my parents to take me to the museum. Uh, the Detroit National History Museum had a T Rex fo- uh, like fossil, and I don't even know if it was a real one or if it was one of the fake ones where they have like a, a jawbone. 
and then they build the whole dinosaur around that. But it's just a perfect movie for me when I was a kid. Yeah. It came out right around the times when you know, everyone loved dinosaurs. I mean, yeah, it was a perfect popcorn movie. Oh, yeah. Like, there, there are some plot holes in it, of course, just like with some of the other movies on our list, like ID4 and shit. But – it it was just one of those movies where you watched it as a kid and I was like, Fuck yeah, dinosaurs oh, and then yeah. and the raptor scene where they're just they're doing <laughs> raptor shit. Clever like, girl. Yeah, like well and, and they're hunting the kids and they're in the kitchen. Like, God, that's I, I wanna watch the movie now. Yeah, I, I mean, these these are all movies that are worth going back and seeing, whether you've seen them. If you haven't seen them, totally go check them out. If you haven't seen Jurassic Park by now. Do you like, live under a doing? rock? Are yeah. you in an Amish community? I feel sorry for you. Do you, you. not like good things? Do you, yeah, do you not like to be happy? Go watch this movie and you'll be happy. Paleontologist. There Paleontologist. We go. There you go. <laughs> My stupid you, you, brain. You want to be you want to be Ross Geller from Friends. Yeah. No, I just just I less really, cringy. I wanted to be Grant. I wanted to have a uh, raptor claw in my pocket to scare little fat, little other fat kids. Because I was a fat kid, I'm still a fat kid. Right, <laughs> I right. To scare them with a raptor claw. Fuck yeah! I mean, and I, I, I don't want to shit on Jurassic World too much. Uh, I thought plot wise that movie was absolute garbage. Um, but I it mean, still, it had the nostalgia, and that's yeah. the only thing I was going for it. Uh, and it did, it did give me that that nostalgia kick at the ending I needed. Right. Um, and I mean, I'm excited yeah, for yeah. the next one. When they had the T-Rex, the original T-Rex. Supposedly, yeah. the original T-Rex from the first movie. She's in her, she's she's really old now, but she's still a badass. Comes up and fights that fucking... Uh, uh, the, I, the, the eyesore. The Irex or whatever. The Irex, bullshit. yeah, whatever the... I don't remember. Indominus Rex, that's Indominus. what it was. She's like, nah, fuck you. And then she, she says her head busts a motherfucker. And then he gets drugged to the bottom by that giant fucking uh, water Lizzie dinosaur. Sewer, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I still remember that uh, when I was a kid, knew all the dinosaur names, of course. You're my girl, Blue. Yeah. You're my boy, Blue. Uh, Blue Should've, was a female. I know, but, but yeah. you're my boy, Blue sounds better. I know, but <laughs> we got to be gender correct here, Blue, man. hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of looks but, yeah. at him. Okay. Loved a... Uh, and like I, I mentioned it before, but I can't stress how awesome Jeff Goldblum is in this movie. <laughs> Jeff, with the fucking chaos theory, with uh, I hope you wash your hands before you eat anything. <laughs> fucking uh, um, my, I think my favorite dialogue is when uh, uh, Ham and Richard uh, Richard Attenborough says, um, you know, every every theme park has problems when it first opens. Yeah. In Disney World, they, the Pirates of the Caribbean didn't run. And <laughs> fucking Jeff Goldblum looks at him and says something to the effect of, yeah, but when that when Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, the pirates don't go around eating everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a very good point. Oh, man. Yeah, that would be a huge... Uh, something like Jurassic Park would <laughs> never ruin actually those happen. movies. <laughs> Jurassic Park would never happen. Let's be honest here. I, I want dinosaurs. Get yeah. on that cloning. <laughs> um, well, we got so many problems with that, like finding DNA that's intact enough to do so. Yeah. But anyway. You DNA from frogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's use DNA from chameleons. Give them the ability to cloak themselves in the fucking jungle so we can't see Ugh. them when they're eating our asses. Anyway, let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on. You, you, let's not point out any more terrible plot holes. So my last movie, um, and this one is also a very easy movie it's to a pick. a dinosaur. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this, this movie is also a very easy one to pick, but I only I only chose it out of the hundreds of movies um, because it, it was special to me at the time in my life, and I'm going to have to choose the original Avengers. Yes. The movie is really good. It's a fantastic movie. It's got lots of action. It's got lots of heart, and it's got a, a pretty good storyline. Like It's not something that's difficult to follow. Even if you don't know the characters, you, you will learn enough about them in the movie. Um, but for me, it got me back into being a social person mm -hmm. because this was during a time in my life where things were really difficult. And I believe we either saw it opening night or like the week later. I don't remember now. But yeah, it, uh, we went and we didn't go to a midnight release. But no, we did, we, we did oh, go did to we a midnight. Yeah, we definitely went oh, to we a went, midnight release. I we remember went opening that night, yeah. because it was it was summertime, but it was like dark as shit out like it was yeah. the middle of the night so we i know we went to a midnight showing of it because the theater was also packed and we just barely got seats all together mm -hmm. um but it was one of those things that it it, it 
kind of reawakened that part of me that wanted to be social with people and not spend my time at home all the, in my underwear playing video games. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh yeah, this this is a great movie. But it was also one of those things where I, I, I walked into it and I didn't know what to expect and what I got was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like seriously, it was a great movie. You had, you know, Thor and you had Captain America and you had Hulk and you had Tony Stark being, you know, Robert Downey Jr. basically, uh, Black Widow. You had all these characters, Hawkeye, I fucking love Hawkeye. And you had all these characters come together and it's like, they don't know how to work together. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. But they're going to go out and kick ass anyway. They're going to go out and try. You got Samuel L. Jackson trying to bring them all together, start the the Avengers Initiative. I just loved the movie. There's lots of great banter, lots of great dialogue between several characters. Robert Downey Jr. is <laughs> he's he's so good. Yeah. He, he I think he could turn any bad movie into a good movie. I think you could put uh, you could put Robert Downey Jr. in any M Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> And he would make the movie far. no, and he would make the movie good. And don't give him any lines; just let him react to what's going on. <laughs> and that's all enough. you need to do. Just let him go and and interact with stuff. And um, I mean, I I think I actually saw Avengers before I saw the first Captain America movie. Mm. I know I saw Avengers before I saw the first Thor movie. So I really did kind of go in not knowing a whole lot. Now, of course, I've known the. Uh, original story of Thor, you know, not the Marvel story, but like the, the original, the actual <laughs> history of Thor. Um, and so I wasn't completely lost on him, you know, Molinier and all that shit and being worthy like that. that I get that. Um, but Captain America, I didn't know anything about because there was no Captain America cartoon that I can remember when I was growing up. I yeah. never read any comics growing up except for like 3d Jesus comics. So I didn't know a goddamn thing about Captain America. <laughs> And I went into this movie, and I can say that I enjoyed it. And like I said, you can glean enough from the movie to kind of figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely one of those movies that we saw multiple times. I know we saw it at least once more. Oh, yeah. And I know I've watched it um, on Netflix and shit when it's popped up. Like, yeah, I'm watching that. Oh, yeah. I've watched it multiple times. As soon as it came out, I made sure to buy it. Mm -hmm. And I I don't buy a lot of movies anymore, but generally the Marvel movies are ones that I pick up as soon as they come out. Right. And I I got to say, um, it you know it, it set a really good tone for me to go. I want to see more Marvel movies. Yeah, like don't get me wrong, Iron Man really jump started that and kick started it and made it great. But Avengers for me was what solidified in my mind that I had to see more of these heroes. I had to see more of what they were showing me on screen. So you know, I go back, I rewatch, I watched Captain America, and I watched I watched the original Thor. Uh, I watched the other. Uh, I, I had already seen the Iron Man movies. Yeah, Iron Man was a very familiar character to me because he was also in my cartoons growing up. I fucking loved the Iron Man cartoon. Mm-hmm. So he, I knew all, all I needed to know about him. But the fact that, of course, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark, it was being it was, even more awesome. Yeah, it was. It was compa- it, it sort of compounded everything and made it so much better. Having having other people to play that dialogue that Tony Starkness <clears throat> off of in that movie. Um, just especially with Joss Whedon as the director, yeah, and his dialogue, his way of approaching it, um, yeah, like you said, Iron Man set it all up. This what? was the culmination, yeah, of what uh, the the top that the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe could be, where mm. where it could all go. And that's when watching that movie, I was like, holy shit, this is gonna this is gonna continue. Like I was already right. into it, right? And I, I, it. I liked uh, the first Captain America movie, right. sort of. It was, it was it okay. Yeah, I it mean, wasn't up there. The first I mean, it was an origin same. story. They were origin yeah. stories, and origin stories have a limited appeal, I think. Yeah. Especially if you're somebody who's already who's already well versed in those characters. Um, so I, could, I, yeah, I mean, you expect more action, and obviously yeah. you're getting the origin, so you're not going to have a lot. In, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. Captain America was right. almost slow in its build up, and then. Uh, Avengers just was like, holy crap, Captain yeah. America's fucking cool. He's a bad and motherfucker. Then he, he only got better with the sequel movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he had uh, Winter Soldier, and of course you had Age uh, of Ultron. It, well, yeah, but specifically with him, it was uh, Civil War. But yeah, and, Age of well, Ultron was a good Well, I mean, Winter Soldier was in there too. Yeah. But, I mean, those direct ones, like, it was all it was all good. Yeah. Like, I, oh, man. And Civil War was so good too. 
Mm-hmm. But no, I, I definitely had to. I, of all the Marvel movies that have come out that are so amazing, like Guardians and shit like that, I had to choose the Avengers just because of that personal connection I have to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it pulled me out of a really depressing funk, and you know, allowed me to start evolving better as a person and getting away from all that shit. So. Yeah, you know, Avengers. It was a great movie. There's lots of funny dialogue. And, of course, the scene between Hulk and Loki. I am a god! You are beneath me! He just <laughs> beats so the good. shit. He just uh, he, uh, he literally uh, uh, treats uh, him uh, like a rag doll. <laughs> and then, as he's walking away, <laughs> puny, puny god. So, so yeah, like, amazing. It, it's so good. And, you know, I like Hulk that... Hulk and Thor, too. You know, I, yeah, those guys Gosh, having uh, those guys having their their their, their sort of uh, bro rivalry mm-hmm. is so good. <laughs> like they sit there, they destroy the thing, they land. They're like, "Fuck yeah!" And then Hulk just punches him. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, don't don't get don't get too don't 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 get too close. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's such a it's such a great movie. There's so many good iconic moments. And it's one of those things that I can go back and watch multiple times. Mm-hmm. For sure. Just like all the other movies on this list. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is a great list. Uh, this, I think this is the last one, isn't it? This is the last this one, man. Last one. It's all you. Okay. So my last movie, um, and maybe I'm wrong. There might be another one that came before it. But uh, as far as I know, is like the original blockbuster. Yes. The original summer blockbuster movie. To kind of kick that off as its own thing. Uh, and my favorite time of movies, because I love action movies, and this is generally when we get action movies, um, and my all-time favorite movie, and that is 1975's Jaws. I fucking loved this movie. Yeah, Steven Spielberg yeah, owned, summer, you know, owned summertime movies for a long time. Uh, obviously, Jurassic Park learned a lot of lessons from Jaws. Mm-hmm. This is uh, an all-time, all-time great movie for me. Oh it man, yeah, no. Scared Jaws, the shit out of me. Jaws is definitely one of those movies I can always watch. Yeah, always. Uh, I mean, it, it's one of the few. I, I've only ever seen it maybe twice, and unfortunately, both times it was edited. But yeah, I can always watch Jaws. It's uh, it, it's unfortunately edited because you missed like the ending. Oh uh, yeah, um, I missed like a good chunk of the movie basically. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. This was a movie that sets out, God and TBS. I don't, I don't think they said. <laughs> Fuck you, TBS. I don't think they set out. Uh, may, I, I don't really know if he set out to make a real horror movie, um, but a lot of this movie is just damn terrifying. Yeah, no, the music is on point, oh, man. Such it's, an amazing it, soundtrack. It sets you up for like, holy shit, what There's the fuck? There's a lot of these movies that have great soundtracks, but this one specifically. Oh, yeah, no, this one, this man. one. Man. Like, this one has its soundtrack where it, it's like you can tell he designed it just, like, whoever he got to do that soundtrack was like, all right, I got you. Don't worry. And totally designed it around the story, around the script. Like, holy shit. Like, some of those, some of those, some of those music tracks, like, I, I can hear one in my head right now and I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> like, straight up, no, man. No, no. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, the the this, most famous one ever. It's the like, song everybody knows. Donna, 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 Donna. Yeah. I, absolutely awesome. Um, Bruce the Shark in, you know, such an old, old animatronic. Same kind of thing happened with this movie in Jurassic Park. Mm. Didn't fucking work. Nope. So, like... So broke. So broken. That's why you don't... It, it's it's a perfect movie where you don't really see the shark until the end. Part of that big reason... Big reason to that is because it didn't fucking work. <laughs> um, but up Shit until happens, then... Man. Yeah, up until then, it's so great. Like, where the dude in the boat... Gets eaten, mm. uh, and the, the the kid on the beach just sitting there fucking bawling his eyes out while everyone's running and sprinting away, like from the the kid who's uh, that gets eaten, and then the mother is blaming the the chief of police, right. Brody, for you know her son's death, and you, sh- you know should have closed the beach. The mayor being such a dick and not wanting to close the beach. And yeah, that like, beach why will be open you, for Fourth of July weekend. Who gives a fuck about Fourth yeah. of July weekend? You got a killer great white shark out there eating yeah. boats. Like, what is wrong with you? Just the the cast of characters were so different and so well done. Brody Quint, Matt Hoopa. Um, I fucking love the characters in this movie. Fucking uh, Brody. Uh, uh, 
like he was he was legitimately when I was a kid my hero, right? Like, the chief of police, right? Because he was just again he's just one of these dudes. Like he hated hates the water yeah. in the movie. Yep. He doesn't really like boats that much, but he becomes the chief of police on this small island after uh, I want to say he was like yeah, a police officer in like New York or something like that. Right. He was a decorated officer basically. Yeah. And yeah. this is essentially where he's going to chill and eventually retire in this small quiet community, and then he has to deal with a fucking giant massive uh, great white shark that is just eating the shit out of people um for quint <laughs> that character is like he's a world war ii veteran um but it is so perfectly done uh there's a scene that if you've ever watched and just about anything where kevin smith is talking he yeah. talks about the scene where they're on the boat and it is a scene where nothing happens except it is three guys just talking and it is one of the greatest scenes in cinema when he's telling the story of uh, the Indianapolis sinking right. and what happened to the crew and the stuff he saw. Mm. They're just down there talking. Um, he's such a brooding character. Right. Uh, I love the line where uh, Hooper is talking about going down into the shark cage because he's convinced it's just a shark. It's right. just a great white shark. Right. He's a marine biologist that's seen this shit. He's, you know, right. going in the cage. I mean, and that makes sense. Yeah. You know, totally get it. <laughs> he looks at me and goes, <laughs> put the cage in the water. You go in the water. Shark in the water. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so good, man. Um, it was – it's just – it's a movie that everyone needs to see. Yeah, for sure. It, unfortunately, there's – the stigma, it, it kicked off a lot of shark hate, which sucks because sharks uh, – and I'm glad I, – I, even as a kid, I realized I fucking love the sharks. Just like I love uh -huh. the dinosaurs in Jurassic mm -hmm. Park. Yep. Um, killing sharks sucks. Don't it's kill terrible. sharks. Don't do it. Don't and be a douchebag. It's, it's, a, it's a movie that, yeah, sharks can be terrifying, but it was – it, it, they're they're still amazing animals. I mean, they honestly they just want to eat seals and yeah. fuck and go home. That's all they want to do. This shark was a dick. Don't oh, yeah. Bruce totally. was you know an unworking animatronic and an, it handed people uh, like a child eating bastard. But uh, in general, sharks are pretty awesome. But I mean, for for this movie, uh, every scene is so perfect. I don't. I, I think this is one of those movies where you can say there's nothing. There's no misstep. Yeah, there's no point when you're like, oh, why did they do that mm -hmm. from the beginning and how tense it is and how long it takes? Like I said, to see the shark at yeah. the end, it's, it's it's you're gonna need a bigger boat. It's what? it's definitely very meticulously done. Yeah. Like, and and I don't mean that in a negative way at all. It's like it's very well done. They they totally they nailed the pace. They nailed all of the reactions. They nailed. The music, like I said, the music was oh. Like I said, I could, I still get chills when Intense. I hear that. Yeah, like I still get chills when I hear that. Nah, 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 nah. And it's like it doesn't even matter. I know there's nothing around me. I know I'm fine, but it's like am I about to get eaten? Yeah, if you're in a bathtub and that starts playing, <laughs> you will be fucking scared shitless. I was yeah. scared to go into pools. Right. I was scared. Like I already don't, you know, like open deep water or anything. Right. But after this movie, fuck that. Like. I, pools would scare the shit out of me. Like basically, anything, basically any, no water. no fishing trips for Luke. Yeah. Oh no, I loved fishing. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> I still fished. There's another great thing about that movie is watching them fish. Right, and the barrels. Uh, like you know, no way you can take down two barrels. <laughs> Fucking Charles took them down. I don't think you know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> oh yeah, such a fantastic movie. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it. You know, what else can you say about this movie? It is a movie that will stand the test of time. Oh, for sure. It's yeah, I mean, one of the best summer movies, best movies of all time. It, it, and and the good thing about it is, it's one of those movies where you don't have to turn your brain off and watch it. No, there's it's a there's a lot of intelligent shit in this movie. Yeah, like it, it's really well it's well written. The dialogue is good. The interactions between characters are good. I don't know that there's necessarily any major character development, but you don't really need it in this kind of movie. So it's like, yeah, it, it's really fucking good. Yeah, it's and, um, it's a movie that. Uh, is a summer movie is an act, you know, kind of an action movie right. where at the same time you get amazing actors, like mm. you said, amazing dialogue. Yep. It doesn't re like it doesn't have to rely on uh, a, a big animatronic. I mean, even, it even in Jurassic yeah. Park's case, it doesn't rely it doesn't on have tropes. To rely on that. No, it doesn't yeah. rely on. Like, it started a lot of the tropes that mm. movies now rely on. Um, there's no gimmicks really. It's no. just it's just. 
It's a shark that are, that's that's fucking shit up. That's all it yeah. is. That's all. It, that's all the movie is. They go to it, hunt a shark. They're going to hunt a shark. It it, it is um, a sort of more maybe not necessarily more exciting, but it's it's like it's like uh, Moby Dick. Uh, yeah, it almost is the story of Moby Dick. Even uh, Quint, you know, spoiler gets ki- gets eaten yeah. in the movie at the so, end. So I mean, yeah, it, it's a movie version of Moby Dick, which is a great, great story, great book. So yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that I've seen it only so many times, but I have, I know, yeah. I know it's a good movie. I, I've seen it, I've enjoyed it every time. So yeah, I think I think that's it for us. Yeah, I think I can call it right there. Those totally. are our ten movies. They're not, um, like I said, they're not in any order. They're not like we're not saying Jaws is the greatest movie of all time, nor are we saying it's my personal favorite. Right? Well, it's like ID Four yeah. is my personal favorite. It's a shit movie, but it's like, <laughs> I love it. You know, it's good for what it is, man. It, it's great and it's got great effects. Uh, it, it holds up well and it sends a good message. Yeah, let's all unite to kill the aliens. You know. <laughs> So that's it for us. We're going to go ahead. This is our Independence Day. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sign off here. Yep. So um, uh, be the, sure, you know, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's it. That's, that's I mean, the website. And, of course, the website, ungodlygeeks.com, yeah. where you'll find links to everything that Luke just mentioned. iTunes, Google Play. Yeah, well, and you'll find links to download those things. Download the pod from iTunes and Google Play. And there's also an RSS feed for those who use stuff like Podcast Addict. Just feed mm-hmm. it on in, and you can start downloading. So, uh, and remember, you know, like, share, and... All that stuff up. they say in the in Right, yeah, all, all that stuff. So, uh... <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. That's it for us. For the Ungodly Geeks, I'm Joe. And I was Luke. And you guys have a good day.